in sailing there's lots and lots of ways in which you get fit. Currently the way to get fit is I'm on the hunt for gas. Sadly some things never change and the hunt for gas continues. My new gas cylinder that I put in last week is empty. We have a gas leak. We are going to make a beef and chorizo pie or casserole and no, you are not getting involved in it. Your help is not needed. problem. One of our cylinders just emptied itself in a few days. Um, so we seem to have a gas leak. So I'm checking the hose and I'm using dish soap and, so and soapy water and I'm just rubbing it on around all the joints. And the idea is to follow this back into the um, ship, into the boat, and see if I can find any spaces where it's leaking. And this seems alright. Doesn't seem to be any problems on this end, so this is looking good. And, um, hang on a minute. close in some directions because now we're not getting that leak but if this opens up just a little bit you can see here a leak has started so for now I will put that in the hose closed over in the gas locker and this is why the gas locker has slot at the bottom to let gas out and that then basically goes over the back end of the boat because it's heavier than air. It soon became apparent that the Jubilee clips were something of a courtesy item. The gas line was on so tight I couldn't get it off and in the end had to resort to a Stanley knife. Some nice new hose. Fairly young. Good enough for this. Now I had the reverse problem. The hose was such a close fit on the barb that I couldn't actually get it on. In the end, I had to resort to Teflon tape. Even with the Teflon tape, getting it on was something of a struggle. I put the Jubilee clip back on as something of a courtesy item. I don't think it was actually needed. Once that hose was on, it was never coming off again. Next up was the nightmare stage. I had to do the whole thing all over again in a confined space with a fitting I couldn't move. I used the old hose to measure the length of the new hose and then cut it. More Teflon tape was applied to the barb in the locker and then the whole struggle began of getting the gas hose onto that. Putting the Jubilee clip on felt like a kind of victory. I put the bottle back on, repressurized the system and then tested for leaks. I didn't find any. 
From the locker all the way to the cooker is a copper pipe. It seemed to be fine, and then I tested the flexible hosing behind the cooker as well. It was fine. Job's a good one. The problem was that the hose looks all right um, to casual inspection, but if you put the bottle in the wrong way and twist the hose, look at all these cracks that open up. And one of these was leaking. So, gas release on. Good. Today I received this box in the post and um, let's have a look. Wow. And we're hoping this will cut down on gas consumption and stuff. We've got the instruction book. Always useful. It is. Uh, I suspect this is the um, stainless steel top pot that goes inside it. And here it is. And there are some bits of cardboard. So the way this works is you put this on your cooker and you cook your dinner in it and this cast iron bottom holds heat and when your dinner is bubbling away merrily you put it inside this this being a vacuum sleeve like a vacuum thermos flask and you put the lid down and then it continues to bubble away in here for three or four hours or whatever it takes when you get to the end of your passage you open it up it's still cooking and out comes a roaring hot dinner and this um, package here Knife. Gets used for everything, doesn't it, Bev? Sadly. This is a little insert. And the idea is you can put vegetables and things in and it can sit on top inside like that. So you can do your casserole, sauces and things like that at the bottom and you can do your vegetables and things Ah. Ah. Mr. D's there, we'll cook her. Yeah. Whoa. Looks the business, Bev. Shiny. Very shiny. Today I'm going to use Mr D's thermal cooker for the first time. Um, we've not used it before. We are going to make a beef and chorizo pie or casserole and no you are not getting involved in it. Your help is not needed. Sorry. And um, where was I? Oh yes beef and chorizo casserole and we're going to see how it works out. So um, assuming that the penguin doesn't interfere we'll just get on with it. Prudence behave. So these are my ingredients. I've got some chorizo sausage, I've got some beef, I've got a little bit of dried mixed herbs, an onion, some garlic, a beef stock cube, a bit of tomato puree and some potatoes. This lot's all going together and will go in the bottom of Mr D's thermal cooker and the potatoes will go in the top of Mr D's thermal cooker. So we have our bits and bobs. The garlic, the onion, the chorizo. I was going to do something with this but it's just not going to work out the way I thought. I've got some stock cube and I've got my potatoes which I've diced. This is going to be mashed potatoes so I'm not too worried about it. So I'm going to put boiling water in here and bring it up to heat and I'm going to put this lot in the bottom pot and get it up to heat as well. And now I'll just turn on the cabin ventilation. So we just put the extractor hood on.
right, so a teaspoon of mixed herbs. A tablespoon of tomato puree. And a dose of boiling water. And then a heaped teaspoon of corn flour. Mix with a bit of water. And stir it in. Right, so it's some hours later and this should now be done, so we're going to open it for the first time. Let me have a look, Bev. <gasps> so this is the potatoes, which will hopefully be cooked through, and I'm going to turn these into mash. Oh, or mash, get smash. Right, um, so I've just got to drain this water off. If you can do. put the lid on. Should be a nice fit, that lid. But it is, it's the lid that comes with it. Mm. Well, they certainly look cooked to me. Yeah, they look cooked. They're totally, oh, they're they're totally they're cooked. They're totally cooked. I'm going to put that down for a oh. um, just going to put a little bit of milk in there and a bit of butter. We like that word, bitter butter. Bitter butter. You can now use the masher. <laughs> yeah, oh, look at this. Oh, that's very cool. So how long were they in there for, Bev? Something over two hours. Not too long then. No, not really. Yeah, that's fine. So that's done. This is our stew. Yes, it hasn't thickened like I wanted, but then I suppose it's because it, you can't evaporate it. Do you know what I mean? Mmm. So what I might do is just heat this and put a bit of thickening into it. Yeah, because I can see what you mean. It hasn't... Um... You know, there's there's no evaporation. The sauce isn't going to thicken by being um, reduced. Mmm. But... Would be great for soups, though. Brilliant for soups. Because this is exactly the kind of consistency that you'd want for a soup. Yeah. So maybe we need to just put less liquid into it. Mmm. But this is the first time we've used this, so... Um... Exactly. So I'll, um, I'll get some corn flour. And we'll get this heated up and then we'll thicken it. Mmm. Mm. So. Here we go. And I think one lesson out of this is the juices that come out of the meat uh, go into the gravy. If you put a lot of juice in, it's got nowhere to go, it can't evaporate out, so don't put too much liquid in, mm. otherwise you get a very, very runny gravy. Mm. But it's our first time using it, and what the heck. The flavours are gorgeous though, Bev. Absolutely gorgeous. And is the meat nice and tender? The meat is just flakes away. It's so tender, and um, I love the chorizo with the um, beef. Mm. Um, it gives it a real good flavour, but when you did it um, in the oven, just that thicker gravy just made it, up, you know, just made it that streets ahead. Um, so, like you say, we just need to have another experiment, but well on the way to a fantastic meal. Mm -hmm.